T. Smith Experience, Salam Balu. Take one. Hair is so important, it's such a part of who we are and an expression of us. Yeah, somebody, you know, somebody that's on your team, you know, somebody yeah. that's going like, hey, we, we have this common goal. We want you to look amazing. Mm -hmm. And I'm gonna jump in with you and help you make those decisions that you need to make and go for it. Yeah. So what's your specialty? My would you specialty? say after 30 years of doing um, hair, what is your specialty? specialty? What do you love doing? I think what my specialty is really is consultation. Okay. And I think it's at the core of what we do as hairdressers. Hi, my name is Tanisha Smith, and you are watching the T. Smith Experience. A show that inspires creative thinking, lifelong learning, and the pursuit of one's happiness. I'll be sitting down with small business owners, writers, world travelers, musicians, and other artists who are making an impact in their communities. You'll learn about their process, their cause, and the motivation behind what they do in hopes to inspire you to pursue the life you desire. My name is Tanisha Smith, and you are watching the T. Smith Experience. I'm here in San Jose, California, where I'll be talking to owner James Griffin of Salon Blue, the Brazilian blowout bar. Hey, I am sitting here with you finally. This has been like years in the making for me to want to sit down and talk to you. Now that I have a platform to do it, I can actually talk to you and talk to you about everything I've always wanted to talk about. Like this is this gonna like, this is gonna take a while. <laughs> we got time. <laughs> we got time. So I definitely wanted to talk about your salon and then things like where where did you start off? How did this all come about? Well, actually, it started when my sister went to beauty school. For me, uh, my family was in the business, and I had absolutely no interest in it whatsoever. You know, um, I I started going to the San Jose Barber College with my sister and shiny shoes on Saturdays just to make a little money, mm -hmm. keep me out of trouble, and um, just kind of had some exposure to barbering. And I thought, wow, this is pretty cool, and I started dabbling in it and enrolled. Well, rather, my parents enrolled me the day after my 16th birthday yeah. to keep me out of trouble, mostly. And uh, so I went to barber school that summer and cut my teeth and started doing hair out of my mother's garage. Oh, okay. And so, yeah, when the garage door was open, we were open. And there you go. It. Did you have a curfew? No, the door time? as long as I was in the garage, we're good. Okay, yeah. well, you know what, well, that's smart. When the street lights come on, you gotta be inside the garage. That's it, and so you can continue working. Yeah, so I just did it through high school and dabbled in it, and really had no interest in pursuing it as a career, oh. no. What would you have done differently? Well, I, I studied about? architecture. I wanted to okay. be an architect, and I, I, I still have a love of architecture, and um, you know, pursued that in school. I don't feel like it was for naught because it, it does relate to what I do in it's a lot art. of ways. It's art. It's, yeah. Yeah, it's yeah, the it's creative art, it's part geometry, of it. It's it's architecture, it's all those things. But um, architecture became the hobby and hair became the career. Mm -hmm. It's kind of a funny turn of events. Um, I, uh, I was doing it just as a college job and studying, going to San Jose State. 
and I actually fell in love with it. One summer, I was uh, traveling in London and looked up these hairdressers I had met mm -hmm. at the San Jose Spring Style Show, which is coming up here pretty quick. Uh, we, we do this every year here at Spring. Yeah. And, uh, anyway, I looked these guys up. I ended up enrolling in their academy in London um, for a, a two-week course and ended up staying the whole summer. And oh wow! These, these British hairdressers were so amazing to me. I had never, I had never been around hairdressers like this, and so I just, I got the bug. Yeah. You know, I just, I came back here, and um, was working in a salon that was about to go under. I mean, this salon was tanking. It was a great salon, a great group of people, but um, it was about to go under, and sure enough, it did. I found a little space in Los Gatos and opened my own shop at uh, 21 years old. Your own shop, like from no shop to having your own shop? And I had no business opening a business. Well, I guess you had a business. No, you had the garage. I had no business. business doing this. <laughs> like, I didn't know anything about what I was doing, but I just jumped in, you know, and uh, it, it all worked out. It's been I over see. 30 years now, and I, I have had anywhere from one to three salons. Um, operating at the same time yeah ever oh, since okay in, in 10 different locations that is you know, so great. like yeah I've been kind of a little bit crazy throwing myself at this So what's your specialty? My Did you specialty? say after 30 years of doing oh, hair, what is your specialty? specialty? What do you love doing? I'm so all over the place in terms of what I do, um, from colors to cuts to Brazilian blowouts to barbering to all these things. But I think what my specialty is really is consultation. Okay. And I think it's at the core of what we do as hairdressers. Like if you, if you, if you really want to be good at what you do, if you really want people to be happy with what you're doing, you've got to communicate. You know, you've got to be a great consultant. Right. You got to be their confidant. You got to be the person that's going to be 100% with them, real, 100% mm -hmm. present, and do your very best for them every time. I think that's what I learned when I first met you. I met you what nine years ago at an event. You were doing hair and makeup for a fashion show, and um, your take all. I mean, I think you, there was other stylist there but I really narrowed into you you were the one there you were the, the master stylist if you will you're the master stylist there and so being able to trust you and then I actually came in I don't remember when I came in and actually had you shave off some of my hair and I didn't have enough confidence in myself but you just did it you just did what you did I'm much braver with people's hair than they are but, yes so it took it took you to just say I got this I can take care of it and making me feel comfortable so that is your thing consultations on what's going to be best I mean the next best look for me. Um, hair is so important. It's such a part of who we are and an expression of us. And so you have the golden, I guess, tools <laughs> to either take it off or, um, you know, just highlight it. And so yeah. I definitely think people have to trust you. Yeah, somebody, you know, somebody that's on your team, you know, somebody yeah. that's going like, hey, we, we have this common goal. We want you to look amazing. Mm -hmm. And I'm gonna jump in with you and help you make those decisions that need to be made and, and go for it. Yeah.
So what are some other things, other than you're here in the salon, you always are at events or doing events, what other type of things do you do outside of the salon? Outside of the salon? Well, my favorite thing to do on my day off is to come to work. <laughs> no. Come it's on. True. We joke about this all the time because it's actually what I do on my day off. I come in. Um, I try to stay away, but it doesn't usually happen. This so, is your baby. Um, I know. Yeah. This is your baby. I'm trying to cut back to six days. Okay, <laughs> that's a modest number, well, just six days a week. But then the hours that you put in are probably seven days anyway. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. It's, it's, it's a lot. I mean, we're, we're operating uh, three brands out of two locations right now. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's a lot of balls to keep in the air, really. What would you uh, say your customers say about you most? What do they know about James? James wow. is... I wish I knew. <laughs> What would you hope they I'll bet said? there's all sorts of things. <laughs> what would you hope they said? Um, I would hope they would say um, James is really engaged and uh, James is like somebody I can trust yeah. to take care of me and do yeah. what needs to be done. Yeah. Is most of your business right here in the San Jose area or you um, have shops other places? Mm, yeah, I'm pretty much focusing on downtown San Jose. Mm -hmm. San Jose is experiencing this amazing like, renaissance right now. Mm -hmm. It's so exciting to be down here. And I've lived in and around, you know, the Bay Area my whole life. And I always wanted to be downtown. Mm -hmm. You know, I always wanted to see downtown San Jose thrive, but I never really felt like the time was right. I, I poked around down here a lot and it just happened to fall in place for me down here recently in the last few years. And so I'm very excited to be what are some of the main changes that you've seen right here in San Jose? Well, mostly a huge influx of people. You know, like the, the San Jose was back in the 90s trying to, um, you know, invigorate the business mm. atmosphere down here, the business environment. And, and I think they did a lot, you know, with the, with the redevelopment money that was available at the time. But people still weren't coming. Mm -hmm. You know, it wasn't until the last five, ten years that um, the real estate market really heated up. Residential real estate just went through the roof. And so developers started building high density projects down here. So now we have like tons of people moving into downtown San Jose. It's mm -hmm. super exciting to see yeah. the viability for businesses now. Absolutely. Yeah, that's definitely going to be great for business having places developing right around you. Yeah. And then you're staying put. Obviously, we know real estate here in the Bay Area in itself is not the cheapest. No. Um, but having a space that you've been at and established um, in some time and then having other stuff build around you is, is what we need. Yeah, it's definitely absolutely. what we need. Absolutely. And you have, it's a lot of like traffic, foot traffic in the area that you're in. And I love the space that we're in all in itself because it's not that you, everything's going to be online. You do have the foot traffic. But let's talk about though, how much online presence do you have and how important is that to your business? Well, um, this is something I've really had to adjust to over the years because, you know, I was always looking for location, 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 mm -hmm. you know, and it's still important, but our, our, our big storefront is really on the internet. Okay. You know, Yelp is incredibly important for my industry. Mm -hmm. People shop around for, you know, services and restaurants and everything, like that. everything on Yelp. Um, you know, Google searches, of course, mm -hmm. keeping your keeping your presence there, um, um, working on your SEO, staying in touch with people, you know, via email and texting and all these things. I mean, there's a lot of technologies that, that's crept into an industry that's really about a craft. Yeah. You know, so it is important. How much of is how much of that do you actually have to do yourself, or do you mm -hmm. actually? More than I'd like Let's to. Stop that! I don't it's like, not my. It's oh, not my yeah. wheelhouse. I gotta say. It's a lot. Honestly, it's a lot. I've come. I've come around, and I'm. I'm pretty good with the technology, but it's. It's been a lot of work. Yeah. You know, and I've brought in people to help, and I've brought in you know younger staff and younger management to kind of push us in that direction because obviously we need to go there. That's where our yeah. That's definitely um, it's huge, and whether we want to fight it or not, technology is here. It's here to stay. It's going to keep on evolving around us, and it can help your business tremendously. Yeah, we do um, you know Facetime consultations and oh, video consultations now for people, so they don't have to get in the car and drive down here to figure out what they want to do with their hair. 
So it's really efficient for us and it's really convenient for the clients. So. That's really smart. And that's just normal FaceTime on your phone? Yeah. Oh. We do it all the time. That is great. It really like, let me see you. Let me see you. Because send, send, send you a picture, I guess the lighting and all those things. But if it's a video, you can kind of adjust to the lighting and things mm -hmm. like that. That's really smart. I've never heard that before. And what, what we do is so visual that talking about it is difficult. Mm -hmm. You know, describing things yeah. and you know the, all the miscommunications that can occur. But when you deal with pictures and video and real life, you know, visuals. Um, it's definitely a, a great use of technology for us. So you're here now. You said 30 years in. <laughs> I stopped selling That's for 20 it. years. <laughs> what Usually next? Usually I like to say more than 20 years. What just... next though? Well, you but know. what more? I mean, can we can we expect more from you? Or you're like, I'm Absolutely, good. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, we're, uh, believe it or not, I'm still working on business model. Mm -hmm. And that's been a kind of an ever evolving Thing. I would really like to scale up my business um, and you know be able to service more clients in more locations. I mean that's where we're at. And keep you know? on growing. Yeah, um, we internally we we are always working on our culture in our business. You know and like how the creative people interact and how we interact with clients and, and how we keep kind of a crazy group of people focused. Good. And heading in the same direction. I think I think with doing hair or anything like that, um, it's a, it's an art form. Everyone has their art whole, own styles and mm -hmm. things like that. And so having people from all different demographics, age, sex, everything like that, how has that played into you recruiting and getting people in and keeping them in your environment? That's it's really it's it's difficult in some ways and easy in others. I mean, we really are a melting pot here. If if America is the melting pot, we are the really great melting Center. pot of America. I mean, the Bay Area is so diverse. I mean, we have we have um, seven different languages spoken in our staff. Oh, that's awesome. Uh, yeah, so Very we can helpful. pretty much talk to anybody. Mm -hmm. I would like to think. Um, and then when you don't, there's always pictures. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Point, <laughs> point. That's all I do on a trap. Point. At the end of the day, we're visual. But yeah, so, um, you know, keeping our staff diverse helps us service diverse group of people. And it's really, it's so amazing to be here and now, you know, in the Bay Area. I love that diversity. Yeah, so awesome. you do service all textures, all styles of hair mm -hmm. and things like that. Oh, yeah. What are some more of your services that you provide? You said the blowouts. Are you doing anything? Yeah, um, the Brazilian blowouts are extremely popular. We yeah. do a ton of those. Uh, we do extensions. Our barbering business has taken off. Men have sort of, uh, we turned to the barbershops really. I mean, for many years, I mean, decades, since like the blow dry became popular in, mm -hmm. the, in the 70s, men have sort of drifted back into the salon world, but there's this, there's this resurgence of barbering and you know you see how the guys are wearing their hair now like a lot of fades and bald fades and clipper cuts and mm -hmm. really very classic styling so it's exciting to see that we opened a barber shop in the san pedro market and it's doing great and we're oh. looking for more locations okay and it's just great to be able to service men on that level um you know okay. just really bringing um uh, maybe that beauty salon aesthetic back to the barbershop mm -hmm. um, where men like to be. I like that. I like that. That's time yeah. for men to have just their men's face. Yes. Can I go into the men's barbershop? You can come. Okay. You can. <laughs> Am I welcome to go as well? Absolutely. This is just we only we for do men? have gals that come in there. Yeah, you know? Good. I and might want a buzz around the edges. Everybody's always welcome. You know, anywhere. Okay. Absolutely. Okay. 100. We have guys that really prefer to come to the salon. I'm one of them. But I do go down there for a shave. I'll go get a haircut. You know, it's really, it's great. I have a cold beer. I get a proper barber, you know, shave and awesome. fade. And it's great. Um, some of your work is like really off the charts and like elaborate. So yeah. you don't just do shaves and blowouts and things like that. I've seen some of your fashion show work. Again, that's where I met you. So yeah. some of the fashion show work, if we and could I, just talk about that. I love second. doing that stuff. I mean, I, I really love do. that creative thing. There's no way you can make a living doing it, but I'd love to do it anyway. That's Kind of my hobby so i'll do you know more commercial work during the day at mm -hmm. the salon and all that and then i'll go and do these fashion events or photo shoots or whatever um, editorial work and it's so fun yeah. it, it really is that's a creative outlet for me that's beyond what i can do on regular clients at the salon yeah. 
and it's a blast, it really is. I really feel like that's your element right there. Yeah. That's still, that, yeah, that's that I can be me, I can be experimental. And fashion shows, especially, definitely if you work with um, designers who are like, James, you do you. And I think that's where you tend to like, where they just let you be the creative yeah. thinker. I piss people off sometimes too. Well, it's not <laughs> but did, Okay, but at the end of the day, is the result the way they want it to be? I would like for to the think so. For the most it's part. It's the way I want it. It's the way you want it. That's okay. You've done how many years in the industry? You deserve it. You own it. Are we you... talking about that again? <laughs> we are. O over 20. Oh, wait, over 20 sounds good. Sounds good. I'm, I'm going to remember that as well. I won't bring it up again. After this. <laughs> and right. done. There we go. So let's talk about where people can sign up to get a that Skype or that FaceTime appointment with you. Get online to your um, website. Coming in. Do you do walk-ins? How does that all work? Well, Walk me through the best I, way. I personally always gravitate toward low tech. Pick up the phone and call us at two four six hair. All right, two four six hair. Two four six hair. How did you I've get that, that? I've had that number forever. Oh I, my I god! I never let go of that number. You know someone will take it. Too. <laughs> I'll be getting calls in the grave. <laughs> You're still not gonna give it up. You are gonna what? Pass it on to your kids. Oh my Two four six hair. That's honest. That's that's so four zero eight two four six hair. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. That's, yeah, that's your number. I'll, yeah. I'll know that forever yeah. now. <laughs> um, other than that, people can kind of just um, yeah. I mean, we online. of course we have our online presence on Yelp, FaceTime or Facebook, yes. um, Instagram, yes. Pinterest. Oh, okay. All Good. the stuff. All Good. the dot com stuff. Good. So thank you so much, James, for your time. I am so happy you were open enough to be a part of the T. Smith experience and really for me it's just really about bringing local business to the forefront to talk about the passion behind the person who started the business and um, why. So I appreciate you yeah, giving me pleasure. that. <laughs> <laughs> always a pleasure. Thank you. Yeah.